I am about to make what I feel is the ultimate vegan preparation. The end result will be a meal that I feel is the best vegan meal I have ever made in both nutrition and taste. It's like right in the middle. This, by the way, is called blooming the spices, or some would say it's the Tatka technique, right? T-A-D-K-A. Either way you call it, cooking the spices actually helps with the absorption of the nutrients from those spices. I never knew that all my life, but apparently doing the spices like this before rather than during or after the preparation of the meal is a, is a much better technique in cooking. So here I got a mix of mushrooms, coleslaw, which you might as well just say cabbage and carrots and maybe a few other things. And the spices consist of turmeric, curry powder, cardamom, and set black sesame seeds, right? And so I wanted to do mushrooms in this particular dish because mushrooms are great for prebiotics, right? So that your probiotics can get the boost they need based off of the mushrooms. I learned that from Dr. Bobby Price, who is the author of Veducation Over Medication. And his uh, channel online, Dr. Bobby Price, has a lot of good information about not only nutrition, but vegan and vegetables in general and the health that you can derive from them. So here I am as I am swirling, I call it the swirl. You swirl your vegetables around a bit so that you get good distribution. And then I'm gonna add in some red cabbage because what I saw from Dr. Eric Bird in his most recent uh, discourse on uh, vegan keto. He has a video called Vegan Keto and he has some others as well. But cabbage is the best vegetable for anti-inflammation. So if you wanna keep inflammation at bay, also benefit your gut, then cabbage, whether it's red cabbage or green cabbage, is one of the best ways to do that. And so, now, if you've watched some of my earlier videos, I talked about how you don't want to overcook greens. I don't put cabbage in that category. I don't put hard vegetables and roots root vegetables like garlic and onion, and I don't put those in that category, right? Those soft leafy greens, those soft sprout, broccoli sprouts, I put those in that category where you don't want to overcook them, you don't want to cook them the wrong way. But these vegetables, you can cook them any kind of way and they still will turn out okay in terms of the nutritional benefit that they uh, give you. So I use these types of vegetables more for flavor and taste, but I also do still keep an eye on their nutritional contribution, so I don't overcook them either, right? What I'm doing here is kind of a stir-fried method where I want these vegetables to soak in the majority of the spices, to soak in the majority of the nutritional aspects of those spices as well as the flavor of those spices and when i cook like this i can do this one of three ways one of three ways way number one is i can let them cook just like this with no additional uh, preparation or treatment just let the heat work on them oftentimes you want to turn the heat down low right i start off with medium heat and sometimes medium high heat but medium heat and medium low heat is really the way to go. And so even with that, you're still gonna get a little bit of sparkle in the pan and that's fine. Don't let that like distract because that's actually part of the flavor, straight up. That's part of the flavor. Let that, let that build up happen at the bottom because there's a cooking technique that deals with that later on, right? And so anyway, this is the second approach. So I could have just let those cook in the heat just like that, covered it or whatever, or just kept stirring it. But I like to add just a little bit of water. So that's technique number two. Technique number two allows you to loosen up some of those spices and do what's called deglazing the pan. And that's what's happening uh, here. 
and it creates a broader distribution of those spices into the ingredients themselves, but it also adds, and this is the heart of that second uh, technique, the steaming action. So if I covered this, right, and let it sit for maybe a minute, two minutes, five minutes, then that's going to help with what the, uh, the professionals call the Maillard, the Maillard um, transition, Maillard conversion. Maillard is when you brown foods in such a way where you get, and this is not an exaggeration. So what I'm about to say, I'm not exaggerating. This is actual science. And this is actually what they found when they studied cooking uh, techniques under a microscope. When you cook like this, you're creating billions and trillions, literally. No exaggeration, no over-the-top wording here. Billions and trillions of food, I'm sorry, nutrient combinations, molecular combinations, flavor combinations are happening right now with those ingredients that are uh, exposed to the heat. And so they found through study, it's called a Maillard uh, transition. One of the ways you make foods taste good when you're cooking it is to be able to do the Maillard transition. And it happens naturally, so you don't really have to study it. Just know that when your food gets over, let's say, uh, on average, 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, I believe, is the temperature range for that. Just over 200, under 212 degrees where you're talking about, okay, so you start at boiling water somewhere in that range, right? Um, the common example is if you boil a steak, it doesn't, it goes gray, it doesn't go brown. But when you sear a steak, it goes brown and you can have a natural taste to it. I only learned about this really because I had black garlic recently, black fermented garlic, right? The way they make black garlic is they, oh, and it's six minutes in. Wait, uh, this is six minutes later. So six minutes later, I took this uh, additional vegetables I put on top. I used the bottom vegetables in their cook to steam the vegetables on top, right? And then I'm gonna mix that together. See, I'm doing this on a, on a time scale of the, the more nutritious the vegetable is, the less time I'm going to have it in the pot. So I'm building up layers of flavor and nutrition. Layers of flavor and nutrition. So this black garlic that I will show in a different video, it basically sits in an oven for about three months at 140 uh, degrees um, Fahrenheit. I believe it's 140. It's, it's either Fahrenheit or Celsius. But anyway, it takes regular uh, garlic and it turns it black. And in the process of doing that, it's fermented. And it's twice, it's double the nutritional benefit of regular garlic. But it tastes like chocolate. It tastes like chocolate. So it's extremely addictive. So you got to be careful because you're not supposed to eat more than three bulbs of this black garlic in a 24-hour period. And it's exceptionally, everyone that I've uh, given a taste of just a straight up black garlic in a bowl absolutely loves it. So anyway, all right, so eight minutes in and now I'm going to reset uh, the timer um, because I'm going into a new phase of cooking uh, this particular dish. Right, and like I said, this is the ultimate vegan dish. Um, these are the bed of greens and other um you know, materials that I'm going to put this, uh, the cooked portion on top of it. And the way that it's all going to set on here, and then what happens later on, it's going to produce what I call the ultimate vegan dish in terms of flavor and nutrition. Now, the other videos that I show after this, the food is very similar to this, right? Because I've just set a new standard for myself in terms of what I uh, cook and what I like to eat. I've actually found my way to have uh, my cake and eat it too when we're talking about raw veganism, but also cooked food. You know, that, that debate, is it better cooked or is it better raw? Well, here you actually can get both together, right? And get the benefits from both at the same time. So uh, four, uh, five minutes uh, from the uh, time that we had put the uh, lid on the pot on the previous uh, um, process and then here it is and, and that's the final result and so I'm just going to pour that right on top of these greens here and then the nat the natural residual heat from this is going to carry over 
to these greens that are sitting at the bottom, right? But it's not going to cook them. It's simply going to activate them without diminishing the healthy enzymes that are inside. And of course, I'm using a spatula to get out all the salient bits. And so at the time I did this, I did not know what I was uh, coming up with, right? I was just following my instincts and following the, the knowledge that I had gained over the last couple of months, studying nutrition and studying diet and uh, better cooking techniques and better ways of absorbing nutrients through food and otherwise, right? And so I did not know that this was going to be a turning point for me, a massive turning point. Uh, because what you're seeing here is the prototype for all the other meals that I cook after this. And that's why I call it the ultimate vegan dish. Because, yeah, now there are other names out there that I've heard after this. I heard nourish bowls and all that. Yeah, you can use that same terminology here. But this here, in my opinion, and in my actual um, digestive and taste experience is absolutely phenomenal because it hits on all points at the same time. You got flavor, you have nutrition, you have texture, and you can actually control the flavor. So all you had is the spices in the beginning and the coconut oil. Those two elements alone adds a, a good flavor profile, right? But then, based on the layered cooking, right, which the whole thing only takes like 15 minutes, right, the, the layered cooking itself adds flavor based on that Maillard transition, right, that Maillard conversion. And so when you put all that together, you already have good flavor. But see what I do here is I add just enough Himalayan pink salt, right, add just enough Himalayan pink salt where I can control the flavor even more, right? So I can let the flavor be just straight up natural, natural, or I can boost it up a little bit from a taste bud standpoint with the Himalayan pink salt. Now, there are two ways to do salt. One is you can put it in the cooking, right? Or you could put it right on the uh, food after you've cooked it. If you do that second part, then the, the best thing to do is to let that salt sit into the food for just a bit. I don't do it here. I'm, I'm uh, taking a chance. But you want those salt crystals to dissolve into the foods so that they go through your digestive system much better. Dr. Eris Latham clued me into that in one of his uh, explanations. And so either putting the salt, and if you put salt in the cooking, then you want to use a lot less salt than you would after the fact. If you do it after the fact, yeah, you can put a little bit more salt than you typically would, but you want to make sure that if you got heat anywhere in the vicinity like I do here, then it's best to actually douse it with a, a little bit of the salt and then stir it up and then let it sit for about a minute or two so that those crystals have a little bit more time. And then this is what I enjoyed this meal so much that I said, man, I'm going to, I'm going to take this up a notch. So I added in some uh, wasa crackers, W-S-A, uh, the sour, sourdough uh, version. Um, that was the only version that I found acceptable. And some pistachios. I threw some pistachios in there. Because I enjoyed this meal so much, I was like, man, I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit in terms of the enjoyment. But the vegetables, the way they cooked, the way they came out was so uh, on such a level that I was like, this is it right here. I've been searching for this. And so all the other cooking techniques that I've learned from different cuisines and different cultures and different perspectives, I was able to fuse that into this and end up with what I call the ultimate vegan dish. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough in this process. This is my first inaugural process on this. And if you have any questions or comments, I notice a liquid that, that helps with digestion. Um, I hope this finds you well, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.